Hi everyone, today we're going to go over the three types of cars questions and how we can approach breaking down uh, different question types. So to give a general overview, we have three types of cars questions. We have foundations, oops, we've got foundations of comprehension, uh, which is focusing on, okay, what exactly are the basic components of the text? What do certain references and phrases mean? Um, and it really is testing on the main ideas and the context behind the main ideas. So kind of what are they talking about in the passage or the paragraph overall? The second type is reasoning within the text. So these are asking you kind of like, why is the author using different components of the text? And how does it play into their argument? Are they trying to use something as an example? Are they trying to use it to back up the main idea, etc.? And the last type we have is reasoning beyond the text, where you're taking information from the passage, but applying it to new scenarios. And we'll go over that a little bit more. Um, so when you're actually answering these questions, it's really helpful to actually not categorize it as you're going through it. It's better to look at the categories once you have finished going through your questions and you're reviewing your answers. What does help students a lot is breaking down the question types into these three parts. Um, so any type of question that you're doing, you can break them up into three parts, which is what is the scope of the question? Is it testing me on the main idea or some specific detail? And doing this will help you set up your thought process way easier. Um, kind of what is the question asking for? So what are they looking for? And then an optional one is, is it asking you to apply it in a new way or a new situation, which is just a way for you to not get caught off guard if it's reasoning beyond the text. So what I'll do is I'm going to focus this video on how to break down the question stems. And I have another passage walkthrough video where you can kind of see like how I go through the different questions. Um, and that would be a better video that you can reference if you want some examples after you watch this one. So all of these are CMP, right? Each type of question, I've got it listed here. So these are three examples of CMP questions. Um, and so we'll break them down with these three steps that I have here, which have been super helpful for students, like organize their thought process. That's the big thing. Organize thought process. And this really helps. So for the first one, it says information in the passage suggests that the author probably believes that the act of interpretation, and it'll give you some answers. So if we're thinking about the scope, is it main idea or something more specific? So is it asking me for like a general uh, you know, author's argument or a specific detail. And it looks like it's more specific. It's asking about this act of interpretation. So that's the scope. We need to know what the act of interpretation is. Um, if you read this and you're like, I have no idea what they're talking about, perfectly fine to go back into the passage. But first, just narrow down what paragraph it's going to be in. And let's say you read it and you're like, oh, I do know what they're talking about. Then you can proceed to like cross out some answers. But anyways, now that we have that covered as to the scope of the question, we want to know what the question is actually asking for. In this case, they're asking what the author believes about this topic. So it's simply CMP because we're just looking for how the author writes about and describes this specific topic in the paragraph. So you identify the scope, you figure out what paragraph it's going to be in, uh, which can help you cross out some answers, and then you're looking for what is the question asking you. So this again is just helping you organize the thought process. So let's go ahead and try out the second one. Again, all of these are CMP. So for the second one, which of the following statements best summarizes the central thesis of the passage? So what this is asking for is, is it, you know, a main idea or something more specific? It's looking for the central thesis, so it's gonna be more main idea. So we don't need to go back and look for any specific information. Um, it's better to actually just like think about the main examples that you have in the passage and whatnot, um, instead of like jumping back and rereading everything because that's a waste of time. So then what is the question looking for? It's basically which answer sums up the central thesis as close as possible. And that's all it is for CMP. It's just what is the main idea and how do you sum it? If you're wondering, well, how exactly do I figure out the main idea? You can look at the first and last paragraph. Uh, that usually really helps people get a feel for what was introduced and then what was being concluded. Another way to think about it is where do you have the most examples and elaboration in the passage? So what points does the author really hit on and build off of? And that will help you figure out what that is. So now let's go ahead and try number three. So this one's a pretty long one. The author suggests that reality and art before Cezanne had been the will of the wisp can most reasonably be interpreted to mean that artists before Cezanne had not. 
So what is the scope of this question? Is it really broad main idea or is it something more specific? They gave us a quote here. So we need to figure out what this quote is. So this is a lot more specific. And if you're wondering, hey, how am I supposed to find that in the passage? You're gonna look for paragraphs that talk about reality and art before Cezanne and artists that came before Cezanne. So those are your context clues to figure out what paragraph this is gonna be in. From there, what is the question looking for or asking for is how do we interpret, and clean this up a little bit. We have this will of the wisp, how do we interpret this quote in the context of reality art and art before Cezanne and artists that came before Cezanne? So they're basically asking, hey, the author is using this quote right here. How do we interpret it in the context of what they wrote about? So just to kind of recap the steps, we're looking at the scope, main idea or specific. If it's very specific, you want to figure out what paragraph they talk about it. Um, you can also cross out a lot of answers that are not related to the paragraph that the question's asking for, which is helpful. Then you're looking for what is the question asking for. Um, and so what the question is usually looking for is going to be in terms of CMP, what something means or what they're trying to interpret it as. In this case, we really didn't hit on number two because they never mentioned any new situations. It's all based on the text. So that's CMP. Let's go on to the next one. So reasoning within the text is a lot about what is the function of the part of the paragraph. If you've seen some of my videos, the ICE technique is probably the best thing to do for reasoning within the text because uh, that's basically doing the work for you. You're trying to figure out, you know, what exactly are they talking about? Why does the author use certain parts of the text as it relates to their argument? These are about a bunch of possible reasons, but uh, most of the time the reasons will just be given to you in the questions. But Good to prime yourself to think in this framework. So these are all reasoning within the text examples. So we're gonna break them down with the same three steps. Now, just a reminder, you don't have to break down the questions into types when you're actually doing them. That can actually waste a lot of time. Just focus on working through these three steps to break down the question and figure out what it's looking for plus what information you need to use. So it's a way to organize your thought process. So here, the author's comparison of a system of perspective to a map is most likely intended to show that. So what's the scope of this question? Is it really specific or is it main idea? It looks more specific because we're talking about how the author compared a system of perspective to a map. So we need to figure out what paragraph that's in. How you can figure out is your highlights, your summaries. Um, you can also figure out in terms of is it in the top, middle, or the bottom of the paragraph. From there, what is the question actually asking for is, what is that most likely intended to show? AKA, why did the author use this comparison? Are they using it to build their argument, like as an example to build their argument? Are they trying to address a counter argument? Are they elaborating on something that they mentioned previously? So those are all different reasons as to why the author is using this comparison. It's also very helpful for reasoning within the text to think about, okay, if they've given me a very specific piece of evidence, uh, how does it relate back to the claim oops, of that paragraph? Um, because most of the time they will say, hey, here's this evidence. Why did the author use it? It's always going to loop back to what was the main idea of that paragraph. And that really helps in that process too. So then what we have here for the third example is a pretty long one again, but we'll work through it together. So it says, according to the author, oops, give me one second. Right. So it says, according to the author, which details of Huisan's Louvre painting support the belief that it reveals his decision to reject the moralizing tradition in art? So what exactly is the scope? Is it main idea or is it specific? It looks to be more specific because they're asking about the details of this painting. So that's what we need to figure out where it is in the passage and where they talk about that. Uh, kind of like what paragraph do they mention it? From there, we're trying to figure out what the question is looking for. And what the question is looking for is which of these details that the author uses help support this argument in the passage. Let me number two. So the author is saying, hey, this painting shows that Poisson rejected the moralizing tradition in art. So we need to go back in the passage, figure out what details are in the painting 
but also understand which details the author uses to then elaborate and build this argument that they have right here. So it's a reasoning within the text because you're going from taking basic ideas in the text to now deciding, hey, which of these actually contributes to the author's argument? So yep, that's how you break down reasoning within the text. Same steps, but just a different type of question. So for reasoning beyond the text, this is one of the most challenging for students. It's when you take an idea from the passage and apply it to a new context. Um, and in this case, you can continue those steps right here, or you can break it down into A, B, and C. And they're basically the same thing. I just use A, B, and C for teaching purposes. One, two, and three works perfectly fine. So for A, B, and C, your hypothetical is going to be number three. Your info from the passage is going to be kind of like your scope. And then the argument is going to be number two, what the question is asking for. So I'm going to break down each example. Now, I know there's a lot of misconceptions around reasoning beyond the text. It's very important to remember that you are not using outside information. And this is huge for students because once you start using outside information, you're bringing your own biases and things that are not relevant to the information they're giving you in the passage. So I'll show you how you can figure out what information to actually use in the passage. So the first part is your hypothetical. It's going to be something like if it were discovered, assume it were discovered, suppose it were discovered. And the point of them giving you this hypothetical is to introduce a new situation. Now the hypothetical is sometimes present, sometimes it's not. So just watch out if it's not there. So it's saying if it were discovered that Cezanne was probably a painter, learn the concept of objective painting from another artist. This finding would challenge the contention that Cezanne. So what information do we need from the passage? Well, here it's giving us this new situation to look at. It's saying, imagine that Cezanne, this artist, learned about a specific type of painting from another artist. That means that in the passage, we need to figure out where they talk about this specific type of art and who Cezanne learned from, because it may show some kind of impact in their art style. It's got to be something important. From there, we want to know uh, kind of like which of the following answers would challenge a certain contention about Cezanne. So that's going to be your argument component. Oops, don't really know what's going on with that. So your argument component is basically telling you how to apply the information. It could be strengthen, weaken, support, uh, challenge, most like, least like. So in this case, we need to understand why exactly Cezanne learned about objective painting from a specific person and what was the impact. And given this new situation, which answer would go against what we know about Cezanne based on the information in the passage? So for the second one, which of the, which of the following statements, if true, would most weaken the author's reasoning about the historical significance of the changes introduced to Poisson's second Arcadia painting? So kind of a mouthful, so let's break it down. So which of the following statements, if true? The hypotheticals are actually going to be your answer choices because all of these are the statements that we have to pretend are true. So these are our hypotheticals. From there, your argument component is weakened, so we're picking an answer that goes against the author's argument. And what um, argument that the author is making that we need to understand from the text is the stuff about why they think the second changes to this painting are important. So the author's reasoning about the historical significance of changes. So the author is making an argument, I think these changes are important. We need to figure out why the author thinks that, and then just pick the answer that goes against it as much as possible. So these three steps are very effective for students in helping them figure out what information to use from the passage and how to apply it. And most importantly, it's really important to reinforce this as much as possible. So pull up a sticky note, write these steps down, and practice it as you're going through the question. And you'll start to notice that your thought process will be more organized when you're going through them. So if you're wondering, hey, I want some examples of how actually to go through these questions, you can check out my main YouTube channel, and I have a whole entire passage walkthrough. If you kind of go about halfway through the question, then you can, or the video, then you can kind of see like how I apply this exact approach to get rid of some of the answer choices and organize the thought process. But I hope this was helpful. Um, you can definitely check out some of my social media pages that I have, as well as my coffee store where you can find my tutoring materials and donate and also some free goodies there. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for watching.